Good evening. Um, first of all, Minister Lesh, it's a great pleasure to be back here in Bucharest, and I'm looking forward to meet uh, with the EU defense ministers. Um, I meet regularly with the EU defense ministers, and High Representative Mogherini regularly meets uh, with uh, uh, foreign and defense ministers in NATO, and I think that reflects the very uh, strong uh, cooperation uh, and close cooperation between NATO and the European uh, Union. And we have been able to strengthen the cooperation between EU and, uh, uh, and NATO over the uh, last years, uh, responding to a more demanding and uh, challenging security environment. It uh, is even more important that uh, EU and NATO work uh, closely uh, together. Uh, we work together on issues like um, cyber, like hybrid threats uh, in the maritime domain. Uh, we have uh, uh, coordinated and parallel exercises, uh, and we also work on uh, issues related to women, peace, and security. And tonight we will uh, discuss uh, the uh, issues related to women, peace, and security. And uh, this is important for EU, it's important for NATO, and it's important for our joint uh, efforts. Uh, NATO is responding to a more uh, challenging security environment also uh, by adapting our forces, uh, our structure. Uh, Romania is very much part of that. I welcome the strong efforts of uh, Romania uh, to uh, strengthen the alliance, and we're also investing more in uh, defense. Since uh, 2016, uh, NATO allies across Europe and uh, Canada uh, have uh, increased uh, defense spending by 41 billion US dollars. And uh, by the end of uh, 2020, by the end of next year, I expect this figure to rise to 100 billion US dollars. So this is uh, uh, showing the commitment of all NATO allies uh, in. Uh, uh, in the strength of our alliance and the importance of strengthening our collective defense. And with that, I'm ready to take any questions if there are uh, questions. We continue to call on Russia to uh, preserve the INF uh, Treaty because uh, uh, Russia is uh, responsible for putting the treaty in jeopardy. Um, uh, Russia has uh, developed and uh, uh, deployed uh, new intermediate-range missiles for some years now. Uh, this is a clear violation of the INF uh, Treaty. And at the NATO uh, Foreign Ministerial Meeting in December, the United States made it clear that uh, uh, they will start the withdrawal process from the uh, treaty um, uh, uh, within a 60-day period if Russia does come back into compliance. All NATO allies uh, uh, agree uh, that uh, it is important that uh, uh, Russia come back into compliance in a transparent, verifiable uh, way. Um, this is urgent uh, because the 60-day period will end uh, this weekend. And uh, if Russia doesn't come back into compliance, uh, then we have to uh, be prepared for a world without the INF Treaty and uh, with uh, more Russian missiles violating the treaty. Uh, these uh, missiles are um, uh, hard to detect. They are mobile. They are nuclear capable. They can reach European cities. And uh, therefore, this is something which is of great concern, and uh, it uh, uh, undermines uh, a cornerstone of European security, the INF uh, Treaty. We welcome EU efforts on defense, uh, and I have stated that again and again that for uh, NATO, it's a good thing that uh, uh, Europe uh, and the European Union. Uh, uh, do more together when it comes to defense because we believe that can uh, um, develop new capabilities, uh, increase defense spending, and also address the fragmentation of the European defense industry. Uh, at the same time, it is of course important that the uh, EU efforts on defense uh, doesn't compete with NATO but complement NATO. And this has been stated clearly from uh, European leaders again and again uh, because there is no way that EU can uh, substitute NATO. Um, uh, after Brexit, 80% uh, of NATO's defense expenditure will come from non-EU uh, uh, NATO allies. Uh, and uh, three of the four battle groups we have deployed in the 
eastern part of the alliance it will be led by non uh, EU NATO allies, and um, and we also have to understand that. Um, uh, European unity is important, but European, European unity cannot substitute for transatlantic unity. Uh, two world wars and the Cold War taught us that uh, North America and Europe has to stand together, and uh, that's the uh, main uh, task of NATO is to make sure that Europe and uh, North America stand together, addressing a lot of challenges in the security environment. Thank you. Thank you.